Should I check my progesterone level when pregnant? The bottom line at front is no. Stick around and I'll tell you why. Shortly after diethylstilbestrol, or DES, was first synthesized and made available for sale in 1938, physicians started using it off-label to support early pregnancies in an effort to prevent miscarriages. Despite the lack of scientific evidence that showed that DES was effective for preventing miscarriages, the FDA approved it for this use in 1947. Early studies showed that it was ineffective, but the idea that some hormonal deficiency was responsible for miscarriage became firmly imprinted in the thought processes of both patients and physicians. From 1940 to 1971, DES was routinely given to pregnant women to prevent miscarriages. In 1971, a report in the New England Journal of Medicine linked DES to clear cell adenocarcinoma of the vagina in the children of the women who had taken DES while pregnant. It took several more years for doctors to finally stop using the drug to prevent miscarriage. No safety studies confirmed that DES was safe to use during pregnancy. More importantly, doctors should have known early on that DES didn't work. In fact, in 1953, in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dykeman et al. published a double-blinded clinical trial from the University of Chicago which showed that DES did not affect the miscarriage rate. There had never been any data that showed that it worked. If this sounds strange that doctors would ignore such clear-cut scientific evidence, it isn't. Today, doctors routinely still prescribe progesterone supplementation for prevention of recurrent miscarriage despite a lack of data to show any efficacy. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in November of 2015 showed definitively that progesterone supplementation doesn't benefit women who've suffered previous miscarriages. But this wasn't new data. This was what the consensus of literature has demonstrated for nearly 30 years. There never was a quality study that said that we should be using progesterone for recurrent pregnancy loss. And reviews of the literature have consistently held that evidence was lacking. The author of that 2015 study stated in interviews that he doubted that his research would change what doctors do. Unfortunately, he was right. A large number of physicians continue to prescribe progesterone in early pregnancy for women who've either had a previous miscarriage or who have a low progesterone level in early pregnancy, despite that 2015 study. A follow-up study examined the use of progesterone in women who were bleeding and once again found that it made no difference in the rate of miscarriage even if the women had suffered one or two previous miscarriages. A small subgroup of women who had suffered three previous miscarriages and were bleeding did have a lower miscarriage rate in the progesterone group, but that small subset wasn't sufficient to inform routine change to practice. In fact, study after study has shown that progesterone supplementation just doesn't make a difference in the live birth rate. It's not even controversial in the scientific literature. It never has been. But as soon as doctors learned of the relationship between miscarriage and low progesterone in the early 1980s, they made an assumption that progesterone supplementation could prevent miscarriages, carrying on with the misinformed beliefs of previous generations of doctors regarding the connection between hormones and miscarriage. While it is true that women who have lower levels of progesterone are more likely to miscarry, this is an example of putting the cart before the horse. The reason why the progesterone levels are low is because there's a problem with the pregnancy. And when there's a problem with the pregnancy, the body receives a signal in the form of lower progesterone to terminate the pregnancy. Most miscarriages are related to chromosomal or genetic factors, and it would appear that virtually none are related to low levels of progesterone. Even worse, even if we thought progesterone supplementation could prevent miscarriage, measuring serum progesterone levels is not valuable because those tests do not accurately reflect actual serum progesterone levels or progesterone receptor activity. Because progesterone is released in surges, a woman's progesterone level might be six to eight times higher in a given hour of the day compared to another hour of the day. So the changes in levels have more to do with when it's checked than what's actually going on hormonally. And even this doesn't reflect the progesterone receptor status in the tissues, which is the actual determiner of progesterone activity biologically. So stop checking progesterone levels and stop taking progesterone if you're worried about miscarriage. Both are worthless practices.